<laughs> Sabina Mazzo opens up as a minus 155 favorite, and she's one of my favorite young prospects on the UFC roster right now. However, she's fighting a killer in Maria Agapova at plus 130 comeback. And I need to just ask you off of the bat, man. Uh, Maria Agapova, when we're looking at her UFC tenure, she's one and one. Sabrina Ma uh, Sabina Mazo, excuse me, is three and two. Um, but I was kind of confused at the plus 130 underdog for Agapova. And the reason why is because she's a fast starter, bro. She comes out blitzing, killing people, trying to take people's heads off. And maybe, maybe the odds makers are a little jaded by uh, her last performance where and this happens sometimes aj her last performance against shanna dobson i think shanna dobson was like a plus 800 underdog agapova came out gassed herself out got tko'd in the second round so sometimes aj believe it or not the odds makers will try to get a little they'll be a little petty and try to get a little revenge and be like all right you let us down so big last time we're gonna make you an underdog this time do you think that's fair assessment that she should be a plus 130 underdog in this one I don't, not really, man. I don't know. That kind of, uh, I, I almost had it the other way. You mm -hmm. know, the, the numbers are fine. They're close enough to where it's not too big of a deal. Nobody's that big of a margin going for. But I almost had it the other way, man, where uh, Agapa was the favorite in this one. And yeah. we saw the only, the only real flaw that I can really highlight for Agapava is her wild, crazy side. But that's a good thing as well. <laughs> you know, right, yeah. like that's, it's, it's a double-edged sword on that one. You, you live by that, you die by that. And it's a, the only reason is because other fighters are able to capitalize off those small little mistakes you made i just don't know if, if uh, sabina mazo is there in her career yet if that makes sense she's yeah. a very de uh, decorated fighter excuse me but we're gonna see what's what's the real deal coming forward on this one yeah no i agree with you man so the colombian queen sabina mazo very very disappointing uh performance in her last fight against alexis davis man you know basically she got exposed and what got exposed was that there's one very clear way to beating her and that is putting her on her butt and keeping her there um for sabina mazo don't get me wrong man as a striker she's long she has a beautiful jab man crisp boxing combinations but let's not forget maria agapova is a two-time uh national champion in Kazakhstan for boxing specifically so she got nice hands she got nice kicks and uh but I do think I'm not gonna lie I think Sabina Mazo is a little more technical on the feet I think that she's a little more crisp with the straight punches but there is a little bit of uh there's an x factor sometimes to these fights that we talk about AJ and one of the x factors for Agapova I think is tenacity I think she has she's more mean than Mazo and sometimes you need to be mean in the cage you can't let that fog your judgment and all that stuff but you need to be mean put the put your foot on the gas walk in there and say I'm gonna stay in your face and there's nothing you can do about it for Mazo I get a little bit of that tentativeness of like oh okay I'm just gonna jab jab da, da, da. I'm just gonna try to but I'm not gonna walk forward I'm just gonna keep you at bay with my jab but then again AJ isn't that the Diaz style right death by a thousand cuts like isn't I mean doesn't that have its advantages as well Oh, it definitely has its van. I feel like both sides have, this is a good matchmaking fight because both sides complement each other very well. Sure. When Maria Agapova is kind of coming in on that blitz style, head down, swinging for the fences, <laughs> Sabina Mazo has really good head movement and circles out very mm -hmm. well. So she's able to circle out, get a counter shot on, Maga on Agapova. We might see something different going forward, but I do think Mazo sometimes relies on that tentativeness a little bit too much whereas agapova relies on her excitement or her, her chaos a little bit too much so it's a very interesting matchup we have on our hands right here so what does it mean to you aj when a fighter pre-fight basically gives out their intention so sabina mazo said she's like i'm gonna find a way to finish this fight by any means possible and i'm like okay i hear you but isn't that what all fighters are supposed to say You're right like it's kind of like the status quo on that does that mean anything to you though not really. I feel like a lot of the time, sometimes it's just talk. Like sometimes yeah. you got, you got to sell the fight, especially yeah. when you're coming up in the in the divisions and in, in this sport, especially for women. Sometimes a lot of people don't really like to watch it, mm -hmm. so you gotta you gotta really go for it. And there's a lot of women. We were talking about it. I think it was your last week or two weeks ago. A lot of women are really starting to find those finishes. Oh yeah. And if you're able to find the finishes in this division, you're able to get paid really highly. So I think it's really a lot of selling the fight and going forward. And everybody does have to say that kind of stuff. To do it, so speaking of a finisher maria agapova three and two in her last five but uh listen let's just say it she lost a unanimous decision to tracy cortez in the dana white contender series uh she beat uh Connors submission round one. She beat Santos TKO round one. Beat Hannah Cyphers submission round one, and then last lost to Shanna Dobson TKO round two. Man, so she's either going out on her shield or she's out there killing the game. Neither way or either way, excuse me. Both of these fighters are nine and two in their MMA career. Two knockouts for Mazo, three for Agapova, four submissions for Agapova, one for Mazo, six decisions for Mazo, two decisions for Agapova. But that's what I wanted to point out, AJ. There's one clear, definitive um, advantage Agapova has in this fight. It's not the boxing. It's not 
not any of that stuff. It's I'm going to grab you. I'm going to put the backpack on you and I'm going to put you to sleep. The rear naked choke is her favorite position to get on these fighters. She's got it time and time and time again. And if Sabrina, if Sabina Mazzo, excuse me, if she had trouble against Alexis Davis just on a regular single leg and put on your butt, I think Agapova can mix up the boxing combination, snatch the neck, and it's going to be a very short night um, if she can lock that body lock on her, man. That's really the key is she gets the body lock from behind and it's only a matter of time until something's happening. She's going to grab the arm. You're going to go for the arm. You're going to leave your neck exposed. She's going to grab the neck. She's going to go back and forth until you leave one open and then you tap. So do you see that the same way that I see it, AJ? Or do you think Mazo, maybe she's been working her ass off in camp saying, I'm not going, I've just somehow perfected grappling in like the last six months or something. You know what I mean? What do you think? It's uh, that's <laughs> that right there is the tall task at yeah. hand, Derek, perfecting the grappling in six months. I don't think anybody can do that unless you're Superman. Yeah. So uh, I do think there's a clear hole in Mazo's game and she's probably been working on it. she has to be at this sure. level you have to be finding those holes and fixing them and Maria Gapova when she gets that going it's a lot of the time in round one mm -hmm. a lot of the majority of her submissions happen when you're dry when you're working and things just kind of happen in a flurry so if Mazo is able to make it past round one that's where we're really going to start to see you know the techniques come into play on this one Absolutely. I think the real question comes in is, has Agapova learned her lesson in terms of needing to pace herself and not coming out so crazy? And has Mazo worked on the grappling? So there's two questions that we're going to get answers to on Saturday night. Let me just talk about a couple of numbers here. Um, so Maria Agapova, in her last fight, she fought, or not her last fight, two fights ago, Hannah Cyphers, right? She fought a straw weight. So she was much bigger, much longer. And a lot of her fights, she's the bigger, longer fighter. Mazo is the bigger, longer fighter in this fight. She got a one-inch reach advantage, two-inch, uh, or two-inch reach advantage, one-inch height advantage on this one. But when we're talking about numbers, significant strikes landed per minute, Mazo is almost at seven at a 45% clip, man. That's that death by a thousand touches right there, right? That's just touching, touching, touching. Agapova, who I think has the power advantage, is landing about four significant strikes per minute at a 50% clip man so she's hitting you very often with power shots right so it's a little bit different when we're talking about takedowns uh you know 66 percent takedown accuracy for agapova at about one takedown uh per 15 minutes Mazo's not really trying to get you to the ground. 66% takedown defense for Mazo, 33% takedown defense for Agapova. So very interesting there. Both of them don't really throw up too many submissions, but we already know Agapova, that's part of her game plan, throwing the submissions. Now, with all that being said, AJ. Do we find true and real value in that plus 130 comeback in Maria Agapova? Yeah, I do. I do a lot, man. And that's why I was kind of surprised she was the underdog. I really find a lot of a lot of value there because mm -hmm. she's and it's back to this johnny walker thing we saw last week yeah. if, if she's able to rain down or pull the reins in a little bit kind of worry about that gas tank going forward we might see her get a little better we might see her get a little worse so that's going to be interesting to see how she actually does it if she's able to stay that wild woman that she knows mm -hmm. and keeps on the winning ways i think that's her best route to victory on this one i see a lot of value in that and i'll actually give my pick now man i'm going to agapova by tko round two Ooh. I do think Sabina Mazo is going to be able to weather that storm. TKO might be submission, but I'm going TKO round two. I do. I think um, Sabina Mazo has the technique advantage on the feet, but Agapova has a strength. She has that wild card. She has that X factor that's not really attainable, if that makes sense, or, or, or not really. You can't really put your hand on it, but she has that there for her, and it makes her a very exciting fighter to watch going forward. So like I said, I'm going Agapova TKO round two. I got gotcha. you. And I think you're talking intangible right there, right? You can't touch it. Intangible right there. So I'm going Maria Agapova as well, man. And you know what? Sabina Mazo has never been knocked out, never been submitted. But I think that might change on Saturday night because Agapova is an angry, mean fighter. And when she gets you on the ground, she's elbows, punches, everything. She's trying to take your head off, man. No jokes, no games. Um, but then again, Mazo, like I said, she's one of my favorite prospects. So there's no disrespect here. It's just one of those things where I see one more, more of a well-rounded fighter who is probably being a, a little jaded by the odds maker. But if you've been watching the fights, you can see, man, it's kind of crazy to sit here and think, especially because Agapova was a, such a big name kind of coming into the UFC, you know, very hyped up. It'll be interesting. I'm going a uh, TKL round three, man. I, I see a ground and pound finish personally, um, but we'll see what happens, man. going to be a very, very fun matchup in the women's flyweight division. Hopefully we get somebody that uh, get, gets on that right track. Maybe we can get a challenger for Valentina Shevchenko in the next couple of years or something. I don't know. At this rate, Shevchenko's holding on to that belt for the next 10 fucking years or something, man. We'll